Hi, I'm Jen and this is Adam. We're with Pepper Harrow Farm. We wanted to talk to you a little bit more about observations, things we wish we had known when we first started flower farming. We want to share these things with you in the hopes that it can help you along with your flower farming journey and make you successful with your endeavor. Jen and I have been on the farm here for about a decade. We think it would be a great time to sit down and share what we've learned throughout the years and hopefully it helps out a first time farmer or two. I know there's a lot of advice out there, but we wanted to give our two cents on what we've learned after 10 years on our farm. My first advice for first time flower farmers is look for easy flowers you can grow. Everyone asks me how I went about finding the flowers that we wanted to grow here for our first year. And the answer is I basically just went through seed catalogs and circled all the pretty beautiful flowers that I wanted to grow and grew them. I tried to do lisianthus from seed my first year growing flowers and it was not successful. Shocker. Really pick those flowers that you know are easy to grow flowers and we'll be doing a follow-up video where we share some of those with you. But right now, I want you to think about marigolds, zinnias, celosia, what sunflowers, sunflowers, cosmos, cosmos any yeah. of those things. They're all very easy to grow flowers that are sure to set you up for success. What our big message is for years one and two especially is don't set yourself up for failure. Don't try to do those things that are very hard to grow that's gonna make you feel like you're not gonna be successful. Do easy to bite off little things that are gonna make you successful, build up your confidence, and help you grow your business. We run our business on the KISS method, keep it simple. Yeah. Piggybacking off of what Jen was saying about easy flowers is don't bite off more than you can chew with your farm. When we first moved to our farm, I wanted to do everything from raising our own animals, vegetables, fruits, we kept bees, chickens, you name it, we wanted to do it. We wanted to be our own grocery store. We quickly realized that that was very impractical. <laughs> Probably not the best idea. Uh, and it was very tough to try and manage all those types of things on the farm. And what we later learned was not doing everything allows us to buy different things from other farmers and to support farmers who are doing those things around us. Yeah, yes. I see a lot of farmers out, I see a lot of new flower farmers out there thinking that in year one, they should start up a CSA or sell to florists. For us, that was not a viable option and there's some, some considerations I wanna put out there for you guys to think about before you do that. And I'll just kind of maybe give you the reasons why we didn't do those two things in the very beginning. Number one, uh, selling to florists. We wanted to make sure that when we go to sell to florists that we know for sure what we're gonna have, when we're gonna have it, and that we're gonna be able to con provide consistent product to them all se season long, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so for year one, we didn't even know what we were going to be able to produce off of our little fourth of an acre patch. I mean, we had ideas. We thought there would be a lot of flowers. There were a lot of flowers, but we were maybe producing like 30 mixed bouquets a week in various colors. Nothing was consistent. And you will, be, you will come to understand that providing and doing a consistent recipe for bouquets saves on a lot of time. When we were having to do those, those 30 bouquets, every single one was very unique and very time consuming to make because they were all individual. So it was taking us like an hour per bouquet to like throw some flowers together and be able to take it to market. <laughs> yeah, but where we are now is we grow so much, we can have a consistent recipe. We put them together very quickly and get them out to our customers. That's something to consider. When we talk about doing a CSA, same thing applies. You don't know for sure in your year one growing if you're going to be able to have flowers all season long to be able to support your CSA. You may think you will and will have them all season long, but you don't know that for sure. And that's one reason why we opted not to do a CSA. We were kind of uh, untried at that point. And even year two, we knew that, you know, hey, I don't know week over week if I'm gonna have enough to be able to justify a CSA. In the beginning, we chose to do a farmer's market. Uh, there was two pluses to that because it, it was, uh, we, we were able to capture the full retail 
which is another plus for a beginning farmer. Jen and I both worked full-time jobs. I worked a full-time job for five years after starting the farm, so that allowed us to slowly grow our farm and back up to not biting more than you can chew. It allowed us to grow at a pace that we were comfortable with. Yeah, and just now, year nine, I'm actually full-time on the farm for the first time. Yeah. Starting with a farmer's market allowed us to get to know people's likes and dislikes, um, just basic market psychology, yeah. marketing in general. It was a really great learning lesson for us to get started uh, with the farmer's market. On top of growing easy flowers, another important thing that was good for us to learn, it was succession planting. This would have helped us in the beginning if we were familiar with a succession planting plan. You know, we moved to the farm and thought you plant everything in May and there you go, we're gonna have flowers all year. That certainly wasn't the case. Uh, we It never is the case. It never is the case. <laughs> we learned about succession planting and we plant flowers well into July now to make sure that we have blooms in September. Yeah, so if you think you just plant in May and that'll carry you the whole season, that absolutely not. You have to be able to plant all season long and there's lots of information on this that you can go grab. Flower farmers often ask, do they need a cooler in year one or year two? We actually didn't have a cooler until year four and it really wasn't an official cooler. It was just a room that we put insulation in with a little cool bot. It was just a makeshift spot to be able to get us through. Year five is when we actually nailed down and got an official cooler that we have a walk-in cooler. Uh, but before that, we just had something very small. And there's reasons why we didn't need it. Do you wanna explain a little bit more about that? Don't stress about not having a cooler in the beginning. Uh, e even this far in the game, 10 years for us, there are many times throughout the summer that we are cycling through flowers so fast that we, they don't even get an opportunity to get in the cooler. And during the summertime, your peak season, most of your flowers don't want to be in a cooler anyway. Our, our existing cooler that we have now, we set to just 55 degrees, so it's not anything cold, it's just basically cool uh, if we do want and to keep our flowers in there. But if you have a cool basement or a cool area to keep your flowers, they'll be just fine until they're ready to go to market. The next thing uh, is a tractor. We highly recommend a tractor as being one of the first investments that you do. If you wanna talk about our year one. If you're starting out small, a rototiller is a great start. But when we were ready to scale up, we needed a tractor. I would definitely recommend when you make your investment in a tractor is to get one with a bucket. When we first purchased a tractor, we did not have a bucket on it and it was a big pain. Our first tractor, we finally traded it in and invested in a tractor with a bucket. Uh, rather than buying a used old tractor, we decided to take a loan out and get a, 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 a nice brand new tractor that came with a bucket, agricultural loans, more often than not have 0% financing, so you're able to get a 0% loan, which is really great. So definitely recommend having a bucket. It was a big game changer for moving mulch and compost, all sorts of things. We bring stuff back, stuff back and forth to the house. We move flowers with it. Let's talk about weeds <laughs> and weed suppression. I will say that it almost broke us, our bodies, and our marriage those first couple years. <laughs> no joke. No, I mean, it was horrible. I was hesitant in the beginning about using landscape fabric. I was determined to keep everything or organic and not have anything unnatural before I realized, and I'll give Jen credit, uh, it, it was her that found the, the technique of using landscape fabric. And slowly, I finally learned that you can still take care of your farm and have healthy soil and use landscape fabric. And I was okay with using it because it's different than the plastic culture where you use plastic every year, every year. We're able to use a template, create our fabric, and reuse it many years. We still have pieces from eight years ago from when we started to finally 
implement landscaping fabric yeah. into our plan. So it's really nice having this landscaping fabric. Not only does it save our bodies, we still have to weed, but you have to weed a hole this big rather than this big. <laughs> so it really helps make it more manageable for us to be able to tend to a beautiful garden that there are not a lot of weeds in. Now we know that there is a lot more information and experience out there than when we first started. We know all, a lot of you are already on board with uh, implementing a weed suppression plan on your farm, but we can't stress it enough to make sure that you are using something for weed suppression for your growing space. What we did right in the beginning was we started slow. Uh, luckily, both Jen and I had full-time jobs, so we were able to grow the farm at this pace. We can't stress it enough that starting small and slow is the the right way to do it. If you go too big, it, it's a very quick way to burn yourself out a little too quickly. So I think it's the right it's the right advice yeah. to start small and, and gradually scale from there, taking on little by little what you can achieve either on your own or through resources you're able to afford as you're able to, to grow your business. Yeah. Growing two acres in your first year by yourself is gonna be a little much and you might find yourself burned out pretty quick. Yeah, yep, for sure. Thank you guys very much for joining us today. We hope there were a lot of little tidbits you learned from our video. If you have any additional comments, put them below. We are very active on our YouTube account and would be happy to answer any additional questions you have about first starting flower farming in year one and year two. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, Jen and I really enjoy making these, so we look forward to making the next one, and we'll see you next time.